You made it through the heat and bugs of the early season. You hung in there during the months of change, then would not be denied when the weather turned cold. For many deer hunters, that's their season, but it doesn't have to be. By the time February rolls around, you might think all your deer hunting opportunities are over. You might want to think again. In fact, there is some deer that make it through the season that probably should not. There are some deer that just need to be taken out of the herd mix. Whitetail TV. There are a lot of new GPS studies out there on whitetail travel patterns. One of the things that is showing up more and more is that whitetails, regardless of the situation, are moving about the same day after day. The weather's bad, they still move, they just move in a little different way or mannerism. Now, that changes for the rut. Of course, there's an uptick in travel once the rutting starts. And there's one other thing some of these studies are showing, some of this research, is that as a buck gets older, he travels a little bit less and he becomes more of a homebody. Now, I equate that to like a senior citizen or even myself, the older I get, the less I want to travel. I stay a little closer to home. I still keep tabs on everything that's going on, but I'm not as apt to wander out and about. And that's something for you to consider when you're hunting a home territory of an older buck. When you're managing any property, no matter where you're at, really helpful information is the social pressure that deer have on the landscape. You know, we know that a mature buck's home range gets small, or core range gets smaller as he gets older. There's a reason for that. Because when that deer tries to travel outside of that core area, he's getting beat up by other bucks. So he learns that I gotta live in this smaller area. That's the stuff we like to focus on. But the thing that I find most fascinating is the social structure, the social pressure and stress from the female segment is basically what drives the whitetail herd. The most dominant does, the healthiest does, they're gonna occupy the high rent areas of the property. They're gonna occupy, so that does home range might be 250 acres. That 250 acres might be the, the best 250 acres is where the most dominant does are gonna live. There's gonna be one or two. They're gonna have some fawns with them and last year's uh, fawns with them. But guess what, those get pushed out to the lower rent areas. They're gonna be living in you know, the not so good areas of the property based off of their ranking in the herd, their pecking order. The stress that's involved with that jockeying for position is what drives deer behavior, it, it, what drives how many deer you're gonna have on your property, and it, what drives essentially your hunting prospects in fall. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another to actually do it. Dan Schmidt is in Texas in February. He has a chance to fill some late season tags and help shape that social structure. You think everything is over and you're gonna put everything away until next season, not the case. What I was really excited about was not only extending my season another month, but also going down with a muzzleloader. I had a new Thompson Center. I really wanted to try it out on some real live game perfect opportunity on a managed deer land permit in Texas. Dan is hunting with good friend John Heaton at the Patterson Ranch in North Central Texas. This is a program through the state for private land managers who need to manage their deer properties. They get to the end of deer season and realize there's still X amount of deer that they need to take for their quota. So that's gonna be the antlerless segment of the herd and it's gonna afford them the opportunity to take out some more of the bucks in case they haven't already shot enough bucks off their property. 
Earlier, Dan talked about changing the social structure on a property by taking out does. In the Texas heat of early February, that's Dan's first opportunity with his Thompson scent. It never gets old. It never gets old. I love this so much. Deer hunting, period. But muzzle loading, especially late in the season. It's February. We're in North Texas. It's cold. I'm from Wisconsin. I'm not freezing, but it's cold. And we just shot a really nice dose of prime venison heading right into spring almost. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback Digital. More deer fewer blanks. By Sig Sauer Electro Optics, never settle. By Thompson Center, America's master gun maker. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. And by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Plus technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Coming up, with a doe down, it's time to take in the wide open Texas landscape and chase one of the older bucks on the Patterson Ranch. For many deer hunters, the chance to target an older, mature buck on your property or land you're familiar with can be a lifetime accomplishment. But it's also a huge task. That buck didn't get to be mature by making mistakes. So you think you have grandpa living on your property. He's starting to screw up a little bit more. It's maybe time to hunt this buck and put him on the wall. Well, now is not the time to change up your management decisions, your land management decisions. You've made this buck comfortable. You've made him feel at home. If you start switching things up, maybe you're thinking, oh, I want to try another food source on my food plot. Maybe I want to put in some cover crop. Maybe I want to do some forestry. You might want to put it off one more year because any of these changes could change this buck's patterns. Remember, he's a senior citizen. He's used to going to lunch at a certain time, going to bed at a certain time, and traveling a certain pathway. Again, this buck has made it through many seasons of your hunting attempts. He's gotten by you so far, and if you change up, make a big change on a property, it could mean a big change in his lifestyle. John Heaton of the Patterson Ranch in North Central Texas knows how to manage for big mature bucks. He's invited Dan Schmidt down to the Lone Star State to take out one of those older bucks that, to be honest, needs to be gone from the herd. So we thought this was gonna be a quick hunt. We thought it was gonna happen fast. And the reason why is John is such a good deer manager. Like him, this is a big seven point yeah. and he's a shooter. He manages that ranch specifically for older age class animals. On the bucks, easy to do in Texas, you have a lot more things you can look at. The body characteristics, the antler characteristics, obviously. But he can uh, get those deer in front of trail cameras and track them throughout the years. Dan has already filled a doe tag and now gets to take in the deer show that is North Central Texas. We're sitting in John's office, he fires up his computer and he starts showing us photos. And there's lots of photos, but in this one particular stand, John knew there were five mature bucks. Can you believe that? I mean, I've never seen that before, but five fully mature bucks frequenting this one area. We're talking six, seven, eight year old deer. Really cool deer. Management bucks because they are past their prime or they just never were gonna blossom into anything ginormous that they were gonna save. So there's five deer and he said, you could see any one of these five at any given sit in this particular area. So the next morning, we're gonna head out to that spot. I've got the pictures emblazoned in my brain. I know which deer to look for based off of antler characteristics, body characteristics. There was one really, I've never shot a buck that, had a, that has had a really super wide rack. And there was one on there that, you know, he's pushing 20 inches wide inside. I'm like, that's a really cool deer. If I see that one, I'm probably gonna pick him over all these other ones. Lo and behold, we get into the blind, it's in the dark, setting up, it's starting to get light out, deer start showing up, 
and now we're, we're, in, we're identifying individual bucks. Yeah, that's the nine pointer he told us about. That's the big eight pointer, that's the tall eight pointer. And here comes the wide eight pointer. I knew immediately by the deer's rack, but also from the, he had a dark face, black coloring in his snout and in his throat. I knew that was the deer, and I knew that was the deer that I wanted to get. This segment of Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Matthews. If you have a chance to hunt an older, mature buck, you're probably hunting a deer that's seen a lot over the years. With that, you're going to have to outsmart that buck, and that may mean more than just using your head. You can't be lax. You still have to remain as invisible as possible. You need to really watch the conditions and never go into a hunting area if any of the slightest problems might come up, like a wrong wind or shifting winds, maybe halfway through your sit. And don't get too over rambunctious about those trail cameras. Again, if he hints that there's too much activity there, he may withdraw and not move quite as much as he appeared to be during your preseason scouting. Dan Schmidt is at the Patterson Ranch in North Central Texas. He has been asked to take out one of the older bucks on the property by outfitter John Heaton. It seems like a simple hunt, but these bucks don't get to be old and mature by making mistakes. John manages his ranch really well. He has a specific number of does they need to take out every year and a specific number of bucks, but he, not just going after those big bucks, mostly going after what we, like I said, the management bucks, the bucks, the older age class deer, and what they find is when they get some of those deer into the older age classes, the six, the sevens, the eights, and even beyond that. Now you get beyond eight, those deer are being taken out just because they're getting too old. Some of those, you know, younger mature bucks, the six, seven, and eight year olds, they're being taken out based off of, you know, individual traits. Is that buck a bully? And is he keeping some of those younger deer out of some of the prime areas? That's the things that you gotta consider when managing a property. So on this hunt, you get to see that kind of senior level management, kind of graduate level management at play, which is really interesting because it really helps you understand sex ratios in deer herds and then management objectives as to what deer you need to take out to make that one fully rounded landscape for the whitetails. So anytime any deer shows up, I get excited, and we have deer in front of us pretty much from the start. We have some does, we have some younger deer, we have some smaller bucks, and some of these adult bucks, they're just right there in front of us, right in the cattle roll, moving around. There's a food plot there. Yeah, there was a little bit of feed on the ground as well. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, hunting in Texas, especially in areas that have supplemental feed, you're gonna see a lot of deer. You're gonna get a lot of deer close to you, but these deer, these are free range deer. They're wild deer, they're skittish. They don't stand human intrusions. If they smell you, they're gone. If they see you, they're gone. If they hear you, they're gone. Well, this buck heard something, snaps his head up, and I knew I had better move fast if I wanted to get a shot at him. I always get excited. I'll never apologize for that. My heart is hammering, I'm shaking, my voice is quivering. I get the Thompson Center out the window, get the crosshairs on that buck quickly, and what's really amazing is I could actually hear that bullet impact the second I pulled the trigger. He humps up, he runs off. I knew he's, he's hit mortally. I know he's gonna go down fast. Come on, go down, go down. He's down right there. He's down. Yes, 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 yes. We just smoked a very wide North Texas buck with the TC. Oh my gosh. Oh, cow. Pure elation. Every time you see a deer go down, you know you gotta be excited. I reloaded right away just to be safe, just to be sure that in case he moves again, I'm gonna take another shot, but I know he's down. There's no need to poke him, prod him, nothing. My muzzle loader buck is down. What a buck, <laughs> holy cow, look at this. 
Let me put my TC over here. And I'm gonna take the cap out of there first, just to be safe. Man, that SST Hornady bullet really did it to him. Oh my gosh, is he nice. Look at that. What a dandy. That's one of the widest bucks I've ever shot. He's just a beautiful North Texas wide, wide buck. So how often does that happen, you know, really? I mean, never, right? I mean, a lot of times we go out there saying, yeah, I want to get that particular buck. Well, you might never see him. For me, it was, it was so awesome. It all came together, but it all came together really fast. Not only did we get to pick out the deer we wanted to shoot the night before, like I said, that never happens. We got to see him the next day, and I got to put my crosshairs on him and pull the trigger. It just was a really enjoyable hunt, and it all happened in February. Coming up next, this is not your father's muzzle loader. But first, Steve Bartilla and Crow and Big. This is Land of Whitetail. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback Digital. More deer, fewer blanks. By Sig Sauer Electro Optics. Never settle. By Thompson Center, America's master gun maker. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. And by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Plus technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. You know what, before you ever head out in the woods to try to improve your habitat, you need to have a plan. Do we want to concentrate these deer or do we want to try to spread them out? There's advantages to both approaches. The advantage in, in how you do it, frankly, is through food. You create that one major food source in the center of the property, the best food in the entire area, and you know what, the deer are gonna flock to it. Now, or you can go ahead and create two food sources and split them up 50-50, four sources. Try to divide them into quarters. The advantage to the single prime main food source is that, you know what, it's a heck of a lot easier to guess where Mr. Big's gonna be feeding today. All right, but now there's disadvantages to that as well. Social pressure goes through the roof. You know, those bucks during the majority of hunting season do not like being around each other. So let's say you have an 80 acre parcel and you've got that one main food source. You know what, odds are you're not gonna have two dominant bucks on that property. Why? If you've got two truly dominant bucks, they are gonna beat the snot out of each other until one of them shifts their core area away or frankly gets killed. The other disadvantage to having that one main food source is you don't have as many different options. You tend not to have as many different wind options. You tend not to have as many stand options. If you hunt that food source, you're gonna blow the darn thing out. You take that 80 now and let's say we put four food sources on there. Four food sources, we divide that 80 up into four, four 20 acre sections and each one of those sections, we offer Mr. Big absolutely positively everything he could want in quality food, water, cover, feeling of safety comfort, breeding opportunities, all that good stuff. Are you gonna have now four mature dominant bucks on this property? Probably not. But the potential is to have four set up their core areas on this ground. So now the disadvantage is the exact opposite of the advantage for that one central food source. And that is now you have to start doing some game planning. Where is Mr. Big gonna be feeding today? You have to dig deeper to figure these types of things out but there are huge advantages in reducing social stress and holding more mature dominant bucks on your ground. Will they leave? Of course they will. All we're talking about is shifting their daylight core areas to these locations. If we can get that, we are so much farther ahead in the game.
Hey, you know, for nearly 50 years, Thompson Center has been at the top of muzzleloader innovation. I'm here with Danielle from Thompson Center. She's going to tell us about the new Strike. So this is the Thompson Center Strike. This is our newest addition to our muzzleloader family. It's a great, innovative muzzleloader. It's a little bit different from a lot of the muzzleloaders that you're going to see out there, and I'm going to show you why. But it's got a lot of great features to it. So this rifle comes with an armor knight finish, which is a quenching process, which makes it extremely durable inside and outside of the rifle. Comes with your ramrod already on the rifle. Um, comes with scope bases on the rifle as well. But we also include sights in the box and it's drilled and tapped for those sights because in some states you can't, you can't actually scope a muzzle loader. So we want to make sure it's convenient to the consumers that actually can't scope a rifle and have to use sights in their state. It does come with an adjustable trigger on here. It's a stealth trigger and it's set at about three pounds in the factory. It's a nice, crisp, awesome trigger on this. Um, it does open like an over and under type of rifle, as you can see. Very, very easy to use. Um, and it also comes with the stealth striker. So this is, doesn't have a hammer like a typical muzzle loader or single shot rifle like we have in our line. It's a stealth striker. So it's striker fired. You move this forward. That activates the main spring of your gun and you can shoot. If for some reason that target, like a deer that goes by and you can't get that shot off, to unactivate that, all you have to do is push the button and it deactivates the main spring of the gun and it's all set.